morning ladies and gentlemen welcome to this inaugural function thank you for joining at the outset i submit my reverential pranams at the lotus feet of his holiness dr sri sri shivakumar swami galu and sri sri siddhalinga swami galu respected and distinguished chief guests of today's program heads of departments faculty staff student and participants very good morning to you all with immense pleasure i invite all the research scholars for this conference i wholeheartedly congratulate all of you for getting selected for presentation of your article we will begin this function by invoking the blessings of almighty i call upon miss sushmita s of eighth semester iem to perform the invocation vinayaka ninu vina bro chutaku vinayaka ninu vina bro chutaku verevaru ra vignaraja vinayaka ninu vina bro chutaku verevaru ra vignaraja vinayaka anatarakshak ni vegada anatarakshak ni vegada adarimpananu brovarada vinayaka ninu vina bro chutaku ve vignaraja vinayaka shan now i request dr r s kardadevarmat professor and department of iim sit tumko to welcome the gathering very good morning to all of you at the outset i submit my reverential pranams at the lotus feet of his holiness dr sri sri shivakumar swami galu and sri sri siddhalinga swami galu sses sidganga math tumkur for his blessings honorable chief guest of this morning dr n h siddhalinga swami development officer department of technical and higher education bangalore the respected dr anand deshpande registrar academic vtu belgavi who is joining us online respected dr m e reddy professor and senior researcher institute of research hydro quebec center of excellence in energy storage and transport transportation electrification montreal canada who is also joining online for the keynote speaker respected director dr m n chanbasappa sir respected ceo dr shivakumaraya sir respected dr s v dinesh principal sir my dear enthusiastic researcher research scholars participants from technical institutes of various states and countries and my dear heads of the departments of sit faculty members staff and students i am proud and privileged and i feel it a great honor to welcome you all for this international conference on sustainable materials manufacturing and industrial engineering and state level student level technical symposium iem age 2022 have been organized by the department of industrial engineering and management siddhanga institute of technology tumkur today and tomorrow which is organized in association with vishweshwara technological university belgami and indian institute of industrial engineering bangalore chapter indian institute of materials management bangalore chapter and quality circle forum of india bangalore chapter i am highly grateful to chief guest dr n h siddhalinga swami development officer department of technical and higher education bangalore who has accepted our invitation to inaugurate the international conference and to deliver the inaugural address hence i request you to join all of you in giving a very warm welcome to the chief guest dr n h siddhalinga swami dr anand deshpande registrar academic vtu belgavi karnataka state because of his many assignments at vtu he is not able to attend the inauguration function physically but has kindly consented to deliver the keynote address online 
but unfortunately because of the delay in the start of the inauguration he is uh, supposed to attend the VC meeting he has sent a small video that will going to be hosted later uh, I extend a uh, on behalf of the participants and SIT I extend a very warm welcome to Anand Deshpande sir I extend a very warm welcome to Dr. M. E. Reddy, Professor, Senior Researcher, Institute of Research, Hydro-Quebec, Center of Excellence in Energy Storage and Transportation Electrification, Montreal, Canada, who is very much interested in delivering the online invited talk on recent advances in materials, manufacturing, and mining for the energy technology. Uh, then Dr. M. N. Chenbasafa, Director of SIT, who is the constant store, source of inspiration for all our faculty in enriching our knowledge he believes that enriching knowledge is possible only through the organizing such kind of international conferences on emerging areas of technology and management. Who has accepted our invitation to preside over the function? I extend a very warm welcome to you, sir. <laughs> Dr. Siyokumaraya, CEO of SIT, always involved in planning and continuous improvement of our college to become better and best in the state and the country. I extend a hearty welcome to you, sir. Dr. Yashvi Dinesh, principal, who is constantly guiding and encouraging for all our activities of the department and college, and he has accepted our invitation to grace the occasion. I extend a very hearty welcome to you, sir. I thank all the National and International Advisory Board for this valuable suggestion for organizing this conference. A, a warm welcome to all the researchers, research scholars, participants, institutes of various states and countries and hearty welcome to all media and press persons. Finally, I welcome all the heads of the departments of SIT, faculty members and staff and students. Thank you one and all. Thank you, sir, for welcoming the gathering. Uh, now the inauguration of by lighting the lamp. Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya, Mrityurmo Amrutam Gamaya, Home Shanti Shanti Shanti. From ignorance lead me to truth, from darkness lead me to light, from death lead me to immortality. I request all the dignitaries on the dais to inaugurate the conference ICS MMIE 2022 by lighting the lamp. Burning lamp symbolizes knowledge, success, and peace. In this regard, we proudly support Save Soil, the movement started by Sri Sadhguru. As a mark of this, in memory and in memory of this conference, uh, we I request all the dignitaries to uh, plant the uh, water the saplings at the auditorium in memory of the conference and the Save Soil movement. has to release the book of abstracts of the conference papers and also the Kaizen departmental newsletter. Book of abstracts of conference papers and Kaizen the departmental newsletter.
ಹಿಂಗೆ ನೀನು ಒಂದು ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಿಂತ್ಕೋ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ನಾವು ಐ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜೆ ಪಿ ಗಂಜಿಗಟ್ಟಿ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಟು ಬ್ರೀಫ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಪುಸ್ಕೋ ಈಸ್ ಅಲಿನೇಶ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಿವಕುಮಾರ ಸ್ವಾಮಿಗಳು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಿದ್ಧಲಿಂಗ ಸ್ವಾಮಿಗಳು ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಚೀಫ್ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿದ್ಧಲಿಂಗ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫೀಸರ್ ಆಫೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಮಿಷನರ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೈಯರ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆನಂದ್ ದೇಶಪಾಂಡೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಜಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾರ್ ವಿ ಟಿ ಯು ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಬೆ ದ ವಿ ಟಿ ಯು ಬೆಳಗಾವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಮ್ ಇ ರೆಡ್ಡಿ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚರ್ ಕೆನಡಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಮ್ ಎನ್ ಚನ್ನಬಸಪ್ಪ ಅವರ ಬಿಲೌಟ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಸ್ ವಿ ದಿನೇಶ್ ಅವರ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಾಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿವಕುಮಾರಯ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆರ್ ಎಸ್ ಕಾಡದೇವ್ರ ಮೇಟ್ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಕಮಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಪ್ರಭುಶಂಕರ್ ಡೀನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಡ್ವೀಶ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕಲ್ಟಿ ಕೋಆರ್ಡಿನೇಟರ್ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಎಜ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೈಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಮಂಜುನಾಥ್ ಎಚ್ ಕೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಚೇರ್ಪರ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಸಸ್ಟೈನಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನುಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಚರಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕೆ ಬದ್ರಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನರಹರಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆರ್ ಸುರೇಶ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನಾಗೇಂದ್ರ ಗುಪ್ತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಚ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಶಂಕರ್ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಜಗದೀಶ್ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಮೆಡಿಶೆಟ್ಟಿ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜರ್ ಬಾಷ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ವೈಟಿ ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಬ್ರಾಡ್ಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಬ್ರಾಡ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಎಸ್ಟೀಮ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ಸ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಬಿಹಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಆನ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಕಮಿಟಿ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಷಿಯಲ್ ಸಿಂಪೋಸಿಯಂ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ಐ ಆಮ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಅನೌನ್ಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ದ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಡ್ರೀಮ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕಲ್ ಸಿಂಪೋಸಿಯಂ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ಇಸ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸ್ಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಇಯರ್ ಫೇರ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಶೋ ಕೇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಲ್ಚರಲ್ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಟ್ಯಾಲೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ದ ಏಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಟು ಫೋಕಸ್ ದ ಅಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇನ್ನೋವೇಟಿವ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸಸ್ಟೈನೇಬಲ್ ಮಟಿ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾನುಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಚರಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೂ ಡೇಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಕವರ್ಸ್ ಎಮರ್ಜಿಂಗ್ ಏರಿಯಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನುಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಚರಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಇಂಟರ್ ಡಿಸಿಪ್ಲಿನರಿ ರಿಲೆವೆನ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕಲ್ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಟೂ ಕೀ ನೋಟ್ ಲಕ್ಷರ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಒನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಓರಲ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹೈಬ್ರಿಡ್ ಮೋಡ್ಸ್ 
collaborative research activities across the country and abroad. In this regard, I would inform you that the first international conference on sustainable materials manufacturing and industrial engineering was successfully organized by our department during 1st and 2nd July 2022. I wish a pleasant stay and a fruitful interaction in these two days. I also welcome all the persons from the media, press and different companies. Once again, I will welcome all the participants without whose participation this conference would not be possible. Thank you one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for briefing about the conference. Now I request uh, Dr. B. Lata Shankar to introduce the chief guest, uh, Dr. Siddhalinga Swami. On the dais and off the dais, offering sadhar pranamas at the lotus feet of Sri Sri Shivakumara Swamikalo, our founder president, and Sri Siddhalinga Swamikalo, our current president. I deem it to be my privilege to introduce today's chief guest of this inaugural function, Dr. N. H. Siddhalinga Swami. Dr. N. H. Siddhalinga Swami is a faculty of mechanical engineering in Department of Technical Education since 1993 and worked as director in All India Council for Technical Education, that is AICTE, a statutory policy making body of Ministry of Education, Government of India from 2014 to 2021. At present, he is working as Development Officer, DTE, Government of Karnataka. Dr. Swami has a brilliant academic career with bachelor's and master's degree in mechanical engineering from Bangalore University and doctoral degree in mechanical engineering in metallurgy specialization from NIT Calicut, Kerala. Dr. N. H. Swami in his illustrious career of 28 years held several important academic research and administrative positions. He started his career as lecturer and elevated to level of principal at Government Engineering College Karwar in 2009 and moved to DTE, Government of Karnataka as coordinator for e-governance in the year 2011. He has an excellent administrative experience at national level while working as director in the areas of e-governance, approval, swayam, examination, parliament, DBT in AICTE, responsible for all e-governance related activities of the council and as the chief coordinator of two national level examinations. CMAT and GPAT, similar to CAT and GATE. Sir, as an academician, researcher and administrator, has taken up several new initiatives for academic, curricular and co-curricular activities, entrepreneurship, research and good governance. He has successfully implemented projects of two international repute companies, namely Project Urcha of Microsoft and Technical Education Program of Toyota. Also, having expertise in the areas of materials and metallurgy, he is actively involved in R&D and has published 54 papers in international and national journals conferences, apart from giving guidance for engineering students at PhD level. Sir has also served as ACT Nodal Officer at Digital India Initiative, GOI, member of MHRD's International Assistance of India, Canada Joint Working Group Committee, Nodal Officer for Smart India Hackathon 2016, 17, 18 and 19. Member ARIIA Framework Development Committee. Nodal Officer of the newly introduced online admission process in 2012 through KEA Bangalore. Nodal Officer for RUSA State Higher Education Department, the scheme of MHRD Government of India. Member Academic Advisory Committee of 26th Indian Engineering Congress 2011 held in Bangalore, member of Karnataka State Fee Regulatory Committee. With this introduction, I would like to mention here on behalf of Siddhaganga Institute of Technology that our chief guest is the proud alumnus of our college and has brought laurels to the institute by growing to such a higher height in a short span in higher education domain. Sir, we at our alma mater feel proud on your outstanding professional and uh, professional accomplishments and achievements. With this, I once again extend a warm welcome to our chief guest, Dr. Swami, for this inaugural function. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, madam, for your fabulous introduction of our chief guest. 
Now I request Dr. N. H. Siddhalinga Swami sir to deliver inaugural address. So good morning to one and all and my pranams to both the Swamiji's and also the dignitaries on the dais. So being a the old student of this premier institution, I feel really proud to be part of this particular program. So today we are all here on occasion of this international conference for the first time which is organized by Department of Industrial Engineering and Management of Siddhanga Institute of Technology. So it is really a proud moment especially for the IAM department even though the IAM department has got uh, uh, quite a good number of, uh, I mean, professors and also uh, the faculty members uh, who are with a PhD qualification and also having a reputation of uh, very good quality research uh, since many of them have acquired their PhDs uh, from uh, premier institutions like Indian Institutes of Technology. So in that context, uh, I feel it's a bit delay, but nevertheless, anyway, it's a good beginning uh, by that particular department uh, to start with uh, this kind of international uh, conference. Uh, definitely in the days to come many more conferences of this kind will going to happen from this department and apart from other departments of this uh, premier institution. So anyway today I wish to share a few things based on my experience at national level which may going to help uh, the faculty members and also the students. Uh, so the first and the foremost thing which I want to mention here uh, as far as the students are concerned, see you may be in an industrial engineering or a mechanical stream, don't be under the impression that uh, your opportunities uh, are very limited or very narrow in nature. It's not like that in the today's world uh, there is a lot of uh, scope for everyone to explore in other areas. As uh, one of the important uh, concept of uh, the new national education policy of government of India, I mean, it's launched in 2020. Uh, remember, now this is the yuga of multidisciplinary. So far, I think uh, in the introductory uh, speech, uh, or Ganjigati sir, he happens to be my teacher also when I was a second year student like you people. So he taught me the engineering drawing in first year and also in the second year machine drawing. And sir was mentioning about uh, uh, this interdisciplinary concept. Now the things uh, have opened to the multidisciplinary area also. Now engineers started uh, doing research uh, in biological areas. Uh, earlier we never expect or we never seen any engineer doing research in biology or in other areas. Even forget about that biological domain, even in the other engineering streams. Mechanical engineer never used to look into civil engineering or similarly civil engineering not into computer science or electronics. So this was the situation but now the entire scenario is changed. So this is the reason why I mentioned that you need not have to worry about your future. So only thing is you need to explore and find the ways and means uh, how you can get into or you can learn or you can explore uh, the different uh, technologies and the uh, different uh, areas uh, wherein you can become an expert uh, in those areas. Similarly, even in the engineering also, now the universities have come out with a concept of uh, minor and uh, honors degree. As a part of this minor degree concept, uh, being an IEM student or a mechanical student, uh, even those students uh, can have this minor degree of uh, subjects related to computer science or any other branches uh, like electronics uh, of your interest. Just because now you are in a particular stream, it doesn't mean that uh, you need not have to explore or you need not or you are restricted from studying uh, the other subjects uh, which you may be very interested to learn. So that provision is there. Earlier this provision was limited to like a global electives at the uh, higher semesters. Now the universities have introduced this minor concept and with that uh, so definitely the students can explore the possibility of acquiring this minor in a specialized area 
विच मे डेफिनेटली हेल्प यू पीपल टू गेट इन टू अ वेरी गुड जॉब सो इन युअर फ्यूचर सो दिस इज वन पार्ट एज पर एज अ स्टूडेंट्स आर कंसर्न एंड वन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट इनिशिएटिव ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया दैट इज स्वयं दिस इज अ मोक्स प्लैटफॉर्म ऐ होप यू मे बी फेमिलियर विथ एडेक्स कोर्सेरा एंड अदर सिमिलर मोक्स प्लैटफॉर्म्स सो सिमिलर टू दैट दिस स्वयं इज अ इंडिजनाइज and today it is the world's biggest moocs platform through that uh, you can access a lot of content i mean e content and also you can get a certificate uh, and even you can study a full fledged subject also even many universities have opened uh, through this swayam platform to study means in case if a particular college is not having a, a quality teacher uh, especially in the remote uh, place uh, in such a situation uh, this particular platform so will help such institutions and also the students to have exposure to the quality material teaching material so here i am not mentioning or my intention is not to restrict this swayam platform only to such institutions where this provision is not there or where the teachers are not available so even the institutions like a sidganga institute of technology where you will find a quality teachers and as a addition to whatever the teaching learning which is happening at your institution in order to explore other things as i mentioned you can learn many other subjects or many other things as a part of your curriculum or otherwise also you can get into the other aspects all those things are possible through this uh, platform means being a student of iem you can learn uh, some cyber security related things also and you can get a certificate also through this platform so all these provisions are there please try to make use of this remember the important question will arise sir whether we need to pay money for getting access to that content no there is no question of uh, uh paying any money for learning only thing is in case if you need a certificate after your learning process is done then because of you are going to appear for the examination and all those things they will charge a nominal amount for issuing a certificate there will be a exam after the this thing course i means all the courses are scheduled in nature normally these courses are scheduled in line with your semesters only means normally your art semester will start in the month of august and similarly even semester will start in the month of january more or so less minus uh, two weeks uh, this way or that way this swayam platform also will announce the scheduled programs i mean the courses which are available in a particular semester or in a particular year so this kind of a provision is there apart from this there are many countries which are offering uh, scholarships uh, for doing research and also for taking up your higher studies please do explore all these possibilities especially those students uh, who are willing to take up their higher studies in abroad or i mean wants to study maybe going for ms or for your masters or for going for a research and other things uh, so definitely there are many scholarships available Uh, as a part of the exchange program other countries are also offering so all these uh, things you need to explore at the national level and also at the international level so definitely these things will going to help because uh, especially the students uh, from a middle class background or a lower middle class uh, they are always afraid of i mean this particular thing especially when they are aspiring to go for this thing abroad they always feel that uh, we need to invest lot of money or i mean quite a good num i mean this thing i mean what is that uh, that expenditure will going to be incurred so remember if you are having a very good academic track record definitely there is a scope and also there is a provision to get a scholarship for your higher studies in abroad also not only in india even in other countries so these are the things as far as the teaching faculties are concerned so anyway because many of the uh, faculty members especially senior faculty members who are here on the dais or on of the dais uh, so many of them are teachers to me so when i was a student of this institution in the mechanical engineering branch 
so i need not have to tell because they are exploring all possible ways and this is one of the premier institution and highly rated institution as per mhrd is a national institutional ranking framework and this institution is also having a, a quality certificate in the form of accreditation so both by nba national board of accreditation and also by nac so you are the uh, what is that i mean the fortunate uh, students uh, to be part of this institution i mean the premier institution and you are having uh, all uh, this thing i mean facilities to learn only thing is uh, you have to explore and you have to make use of the facilities and uh, for the faculty members in the future this multidisciplinary concept will come into picture and in that multidisciplinary concept uh, all this i mean cross uh, what is that uh, teaching concepts and other things i mean civil uh, faculty members uh, can teach for the computer science or similarly computer science can teach for the civil engineering and the topics of civil engineering you will find in other branches uh, all these possibilities will going to be there so here now especially the junior faculty members need to explore or need to upgrade their skill sets uh, in case if they want to survive in future now the technology is changing at a rapid pace that they cannot restrict uh, their specialization only to their area or the core area now they need to improve upon or they need to explore how they can improve their skill sets uh, in the other emerging technologies so the emerging technologies may be in artificial intelligence or data science machine learning iot cyber security all these things so there was a time during that time i mean mechanical students or iem students are almost restricted from studying this computer related subject even from the university perspective also there was no provision so now all these barriers are removed even when this uh, nep new national education policy will come into picture in a full fledged way anyway karnataka is the first state which already implemented this nep and even our vishweshwarya technological university has also adopted uh, this uh, new national education policy and accordingly the university is bringing lot of uh, changes uh, even uh, in that examination pattern or even in academic uh, curriculums and other things so in this context uh, this nep will open the door for the faculty members especially the junior faculty members to explore and to acquire additional skill sets so that they can start teaching the students of other emerging areas otherwise in the days to come all this especially our core branches today the core branches are facing a difficulty in getting a a quality students because most of the students are after computer science or this emerging area courses but actually the thing is totally different i mean the situation is totally different please don't be after this computer science and engineering or only this emerging area every area or every branch of engineering has got applications of this emerging areas even industrial engineering has got a quite a good number of emerging area i mean uh, that emerging area technology can be used uh, in our core industrial engineering or even in core mechanical engineering all these emerging area technologies are very much relevant or very much required uh, even for all the core areas also so my sincere suggestion or advice to especially the younger students or maybe the younger faculty members is please try to acquire the skill sets and try to adopt or try to make use of uh, those technologies uh, in your core area if you are a be a student in mechanical engineering uh, how machine learning or how artificial intelligence can be used uh, in your core areas so this is how you should start exploring and even so like this international conference uh, here most of the papers are presented uh, uh, by the students uh, or you may be the student going to present the paper you might have done some research or you might have done some project work so in your project work also now the project work may be related to your core area now you can think how this new technology can be used in your core area now you are having a strong knowledge or a thorough knowledge of your core areas only thing is you need to explore or you need to learn 
certain things related to you need not have to get a degree in that emerging areas see that is not the issue or that is not the uh, requirement of the day even if you become a certified engineer with that expertise in artificial intelligence with a mechanical engineering background or a mechanical engineering degree in your hand so definitely you will get a very good job and similarly you can explore so that uh, emerging area technologies uh, in your core yeah so that is why even that people who are in that uh, core branches uh, need not have to worry about uh, whether we are going to get job or whether we can do the research uh, using those technologies or not but here the only thing is uh, how quickly the one will going to acquire the skill set or the knowledge related to those emerging areas and once you get those skill sets or the knowledge about that emerging areas definitely you yourself will come to know that how you can adopt those technologies in your core area actually core area people always will have the advantage compared to the computer science or pure it background people so they are only the people who know what is that technology but they lack in applications means they don't know where exactly this particular technology can be used whereas the advantage with the core area people is he know the because especially you take any engineering related things there it consists of mechanical even the civil engineering electronics and electrical so these are the main things so if you know the technology and if you are having a thorough knowledge of this core area it will become very easy to correlate or to implement or where you can bring that so anyway this kind of a research started already in iits and in premier institutions now the same culture has percolated into the quality institutions like a sidganga institute of technology and many other institutions in our state and now being the students of uh, this kind of a premier institutions uh, definitely your teachers are there to help or there to guide you people to get into the stream or get into the path which the international uh, this one i mean uh, that the technocrats uh, or the scientists uh, are after it so with this uh, few things uh, one i wish this uh, particular international conference a great success uh, being the first international conference uh, i wish the department uh, to come out with many more international conference uh, in the years to come and also i thank organizers of uh, the the institution so for giving me an opportunity to be part of with this particular function and of course uh, this uh, program so thanks one and all and have a good day thank you in this phd in the area uh, in the area of uh, physics uh, research he from in 2003 from 2003 to may 2009 he worked in the department of material science and Engin engineering chemistry and physics at national university of singapore from june 2019 uh, to uh, august 21 he worked as in the center of excellence in transportation electrification and energy storage hydro cube in canada he is a leading researcher in the area of materials for energy storage material processing and characterization nanotechnology energy and environment and development of uh, su technology for energy storage and for renewable technologies he has published two, uh, 220 papers and his h index is 69 uh, with overall uh, 17400 citation it gives me pleasure to introduce uh, such uh, researcher uh, to this audience thank you so once again thank you madam thank so you can you help me to activate my account sir thank you i would like to share my ppt once again uh, good morning namaskara to everybody yeah i think i am able to okay i am okay sir okay oh please Yes, sir. You are audible. You can continue, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So that since uh, our organizer has given me uh, some ten, fifteen, twenty minutes, I'll put my timer on so that make sure that I will not, will not exceed my. Okay. So uh, once again, uh, thanks for the organizers. Just I'll share my slide. Then uh, conference, especially attendees, include uh, and all the faculties, friends. Okay. Once again. 
thank you very much so so maybe another 10 to 15 minutes i'm going to discuss about what are the importance of how uh, industrial manufacturing and management as a especially mechanical or industrial engineer how we can contribute it for the future industry or anything so especially based on my experience also i worked with the academic when i was there if you come to the industry it is a multidisciplinary in the sense that we have to work with the mechanical engineers and the electrical engineers and sometimes chemical engineers including civil engineering in fact mining is a multidisciplinary or sometimes at the end we have to work with the management also so without any further delay in fact this conference has been covered with the various topics as you can see clearly the importance of this conference it means that it clearly shows that the importance of metallurgies or um, um, mechanical engineering perspective how the and also especially automation i think that is very important as irrespective if you go for your like mining industry or a ev industry again automation is very important again instrumentation that is also very important as you know that what we learned so especially if you want to like run the big uh, instruments you have to run that one i think mechanical engineers also we can do our industry overall they what they call as a industrial engineering it is a multidisciplinary again i think you can see that uh, at the end uh, it is a we need, we need a lot of experience in the modeling and the competitions i think nowadays we have advanced computing without doing an experiment people can do the interesting automation also they can do so so overall summary there is a especially as the student perspective the previous speaker already mentioned that uh, there is a lot of opportunities for the students you can don't fix it as, as i mentioned of student i think in love with a lot of interdisciplinary you can work in a way different areas so my suggestion is the be creative and at least you what i noticed that theoretically uh, very nice sections you are going to conduct the, so what my suggestion is that you would make some more on experiments i think that will be good for your future either you want to go to research industry or academic teaching etc so presently i based in quebec so in canada english and french speaking colony in addition to other seasons we can see different uh, thing so why i am mentioning that some students are there in fact i work with national university of singapore research has no bound no boundary these are the few examples I've been trained a lot of high school and junior college students in the area of materials processing and uh, energy uh, technology. Again, as you can see clearly that uh, so we are able to publish some few papers at the end. I think that is very useful, especially some students based on the junior college, some publication made them to, I think they are able to study the overseas uh, prestigious universities also. So, and also in addition to that, I think people are able to present like, uh, for example, you people also presenting 10 to 15 minutes, that's why similar way many students have been presented in the, I think the conference is the best uh, medium to present, I think you can learn, especially presentation skills, and also what you learn, what is the other things people are doing, sometimes it's very difficult to cover the, all the research topics, I think that is a nice opportunity for you people to learn. Anyway, these are the some few PhD students who have been trained at the National University of Singapore. These are the small collaboration within uh, Singapore, India and also few other part of the world. Although here we work with uh, universities, the top university, in May, especially mechanical and McGill University. Sometimes this is very important. That's why always we train them young researcher or some students are there. At least whatever the knowledge is there, we are going to share them. So again, as I told that uh, this material industry, all the technology, it is very old. It's, uh, as you know that all the industrial engineering known from the last, from the Stone Age, Copper, Upper Age and uh, Silicon Age. I think Silicon Age is one of the things very useful for 1950. There's huge, uh, for example, discover vacuum tubes, computers, so on, our iPhones, etc. Again, the mechanical engineering point of view, 1980, there is a huge interest on the what they call lightweight, super alloys and materials, uh, the mechanical, it means uh, how to improve the material properties, I think that is very interesting. And uh, nanotechnology, year 2000, we call as a, there is huge interest in the nanotechnology, that's why in this area and also now, uh, like future, they call as intelligent low, low carbon age, in fact, if you capture the material with the carbon or you can reduce either you that's why material manufacturing, especially in terms of the industry, it will play. So, as you, see, as you can see clearly, either materials, you can use it for energy, environment, healthcare, and water technology, and also some things with the textile. So, again, there is a lot of applications, 
starting from the base strength for example you can see the construction technology will vary from the place to place for example in india depending on climate conditions especially that place is different whereas the, in canada again the we are up accordingly if you now i think we, in this conference also people are talking about some super alloys and uh, again explosive material silic solid state electronics and then especially that agriculture industry also it is very uh, lot of interesting things going on especially compared to the olden time now there is a lot of interesting things in this uh, and pharmaceutical bio and a few other especially depends on the physical property you probably be classified in different categories again why i am mentioning that uh, for example here so you see that uh, food like especially wood industry is a major especially in canada due to climate and always people they use the like lightweight materials again wood because of insulation that's why here the main is the wood industry that's why if you see that again there is a lot if you work with the indo wood industry there is a lot of industrial automation how to especially that itself is a very interesting thing here yeah. and if you talk about the steel and lightweight materials for aerospace although this technology is known especially carbon fibers i think these are very important areas people are concentrating for the graphite etc i think that is very important and another area is also is the glass industry either you can do what they call the electrochromics and the windows and then we can use it for lot of applications for example uh, fiber different different areas also you can for example optics uh, for applications also you can use for example if you talk about silicon also the very interesting technology people can use why i mentioning there is a lot of opportunities also don't think that is mechanical engineering also here if you go with large scale i think uh, that is very important uh, uh, aspect at the especially mechanical and manufacturing engineering and also for example other areas is uh, what they call thermoelectric materials if especially there are all the very interesting things you can do so these are the smart materials if you talk about the civil engineering again we need a smart materials for the building again if you talk about people especially place like here people are looking about the material for thermal insulations heating and cooling sometimes uh, and also robots motor shuttle and uh, for example uh, flexible organic material for photovoltaic in the sense that now people are looking for some organic materials especially so they can they can to make it this polymer they can roll to roll they can do i think these are materials are looking again something like resistive switching memory applications and radar and uh, especially uh, 5g 6g terahertz electronics especially you know that due to covid they everybody every any every remote village people are many people are using this internet i think people want to be fast internet so that's why we have to look for the smart materials again i think in terms of energy storage we got smart grid electric vehicles autonomous electric vehicles and if you talk about the your electrical engineers there is a call as a chargers and power engineering etc again i told you that uh, other last area is a multi scale modeling again so it is very important if you do anything for example automation ai and uh, information these are all the things are very all multi scale that's why the previous speaker mentioned that uh, always now with a lot of opportunities you can do cross uh, discipline you can understand i think again the uh, simulation automation is very important for you people again these are the different type of opportunities people can work in this area of materials especially for energy environment and various aspects so in summary what i am mean, industrial engineering is industrial area I don't think that uh, all since i work with industry presently so we have to work with material engineers mechanical engineer sometimes chemical engineering uh, triple e people also play an important role sometimes you want to automate uh, instrument and again you want to work with the mining industry we need to work with the civil engineers and also sometimes yeah you, all things you have to manage them you need a good management that is very important that is why management skills and especially risk risk management and environmental risk assessment and all this one is very at the end we have to work with the lawyers also they are the people do take care of the things so i think one small uh, one slide if you talk about the mining how the industrial engineering will play an important role again you can see it is mining is a uh, almost like the, almost 200 to 300 tons of the any materials that it is very lot of production facilities again uh, you would like to work with the mining and processing and the component manufacturing and uh, testing and self pack especially if you talk about lithium battery pack so these are all the Uh, different uh, steps is going to occur so why i am mentioning that not to do this one you have to work with the mining engineer means that mechanical engineering background 
electrical engineering or sometimes we have to work with uh, some people have uh, different backgrounds, sometimes chemical engineers also we needed if you work the field, civil engineering, that's why. So again, if you talk, it will vary depending on places, like, because, for example, your electric vehicles, you'd like to run, we need a raw materials, that's why we need a, this type of mineral, we want, we want to know, the, for example, powder metallurgy also technology is very important, although it is the world technology, what you learn from the, especially material processing, uh, I think one subject you are going to learn in the mechanical engineering, that's why all the things are a little bit useful for you in the future. Again, if you, if you make a cell fact, again, if you want to run with you, integrate into your battery into your electric vehicles, uh, yeah. again, we have to understand the, how the, so sometimes how the chemistry and, for example, thermal uh, insulation or sometimes thermal management, that's why always don't think it is like it is, we need uh, stick to one, one point, at least try to understand the as maximum, try to understand, try to see what is going to happening in the little, like, uh, like recent trends, I think accordingly we to slightly we to modify the according to the topic. So again, up the end, uh, recycler economy, recycling is very important. What are the researches we call as sustainability? I think these are the important points you to. Again, another uh, area, for example, assuming the graphite is a one mining material. So the main issue is that if you want to use this particular material with various applications, for example, a lot of people are familiar this one you can use it for civil engineering, uh, refractory materials, graphite crucible, gasket and rods for nuclear industry. Again, so it is a lot of public accordingly we have to because the purity is so accordingly that's why. So what I am mentioning that there is a lot of opportunities. So sometimes you have to work with the uh, chemist, physicist, etc. So for example, uh, especially in the materials for, uh, again it depends on some specification. For example, now electric vehicles. So for them we want to be long, high energy density, power density, means that more capacity, new material development and manufacturing, I think that is very important. I think these are the very important point you have to remember, I think due to time limitations I am going fast, whatever the way you do, I think uh, it is very important to, uh, you have to follow the specifications of the clients and then sometimes at the end safety, cost and toxicity and sustainability risk. I think this, this, for example, this is the one aspect if you consider about the electric vehicular industry. I think I'm, I'm going to skip this uh, details due to time limitations. So why I'm mentioning that if you work with your laptop, your iPhones or your uh, this sub cylindrical cells that are using your laptop are same cells people can talk to around nearly 7,000 cells are put in this type of electric vehicular pack again. So idea is that you have to work with sometimes if you go to automobile engineering, there is a lot of opportunities for you to understand how the battery again at least is nice for you to learn the what is the chemistry so sometimes is good for you to understand especially understand the safety aspect that's why you won't exceed the limit of the battery so overall summary is that if you are the electric vehicle or battery industry i think that's why it is like we need a in, importance of power electronic engineers electric machines that's why it is a interdisciplinary that's why it's not like one man show. that's why you have to understand all this, this, especially this industrial engineering, I think it is a nice opportunity for you to explore the different uh, cross-disciplinary area, I think that is, will be good for you people in future to get a job. So anyway, I think uh, due to time limitations, again, I think all people are familiar about batteries, we can use it for various applications, you want to use for solar or wind or run with electric vehicles, the idea is that just we have to reduce the CO2 emission and SO2. So, so as a researcher point of view, they may see that the air pollution is a major issue. So that's why people are looking to replace the gasoline vehicle. Another way is the cost of the petrol price keep on rising. That's why people are looking for the alternative materials. So another is all, all people are known that the, either yeah, now I think uh, solar energy is a little bit easier. People call it zero, uh, zero and batteries are also we can reduce the lesser CO2 emission. So another important, another to have another three to four minutes again. So what I'm mentioning that if you take autonomous electric vehicle is a driverless vehicle. Again, there is a uh, lidar and uh, computer engineers and automobile. That's why it is a lot of opportunities, both mechanical, civil and uh, in the, uh, all the type of engineering you can work together in this particular area. And uh, these are the different type of the opportunities. That's why that's why we have really now anybody can do it is interdisciplinary. I think people can get a lot of opportunities all over the world. 
so regarding industrial manufacturing is concerned always is uh, it like material manufacturing is very depends on whatever the applications are looking some people are looking for mechanical properties or some people catalytic properties electrical or thermal magnetic accordingly which which type of the application accordingly maybe the, the specific applications accordingly they have to design the materials again they design the reactors so it is almost like big it is not like mini small scale like large scale uh, material processing is needed for especially so either if you go for petroleum refinery or food industry or chemical industry again so this type of the concept are your material manufacturing either by ceramic powders or oxides or any type of the material they will follow this uh, similar style so again either you can do uh, you do what type of uh, different type of processing techniques are possible again depends on cost and uh, requirement accordingly people for example your solar panels again they will need thin film technology or for example batteries we need a bulk materials you want to prepare either chemical method you can do or for example nowadays you want to be mechanical proper densification of materials we need something like uh, a hard processing design so now i am going to uh, tell us i have another two minutes so quickly i'll uh, so these are the different type of opportunities i'm telling that material manufacturing especially for batteries so so these are the i think i'm telling like another giga factory facilities are available i think these are the lot of opportunities so what i'm mentioning that uh, due to time limitations as a battery is very important so that's why if you want to prepare the materials either you want to sodium or lithium or different type of manufacturing i think i am going to wind up so there is a lot of opportunities again the in terms of textile engine industry or so some nano materials people want to be sensor technology etc so without any further delay what i am mentioning the water at the end you have to follow the uh, sustainability as for example you have to uh, sustainability is very important in fact this conference has been covered with the importance of sustainability in a different way so that's why we have to recover them any, any type of materials to, that, that way we very useful for us i think uh, so you respect you can see that any anyway, recycling the big industry is spending there is a huge investment and uh, i think these are my small conclusions so still there is a lot of scope for the mining and manufacturing and uh, especially the greener materials again so what i understand that uh, although we have very nice uh, theoretical knowledge i think still it will be nice for especially young research maybe some more opportunity industrial level with large scale manufacturing or sometimes that knowledge will be useful for you especially future for the work in the industry or other opportunities is that uh, just you can go for at least you try to publish some papers so that that will be more advantage for you you would like to go outside the uh, for example for example this type of conference presentations that will be good for you people once again thank you very much i am having a without any further delay again uh, thanks to the organizer so i think they have given me almost 20 minutes so i stopped by 9 minutes so, thank you very much sir so the presentation was highly useful we will catch you some other time for the pre same presentation with our interdisciplinary research scholars so looking forward to interact with you in future sir thank you thank you so much sir okay okay th thank you very much sir thank thank you very much thank you to all okay. the registrar we to you dr s anand anand s desh pande has uh, sent a message so he will present his message it is just one minute video we'll have a video of dr Sarah. desh pande good morning swami the development officer uh, the officer of office of the commissioner dte dr dinesh dr shiva kumaraya dr chennabasappa professor kardevarmat delegates and my dear friends indeed it is a matter of great pleasure for me to be the part of this inaugural program for the international conference on sustainable materials manufacturing and industrial engineering uh, which is being hosted by the siddhaganga institute of technology of course the siddhaganga institute of technology is one of the best institutes of the university of course the institute is known for its culture the values that are being practiced and the wonderful alumni base the student base and the faculty base which we see in the organization of course the theme of the conference is perfect and apt to whatever we see around today uh, as we all know the industry in, industrial engineering is one of the most uh, important uh, specializations uh, in the engineering domain 
primarily because it gives us the effective ways of using all the basic resources such as people, machine, material, space, information, energy, and of course, ultimately, we. One Hello, of this, uh, event, uh, international conference on sustainable materials manufacturing and industrial engineering. Now, I request Dr. S. V. Dinesh to address the gathering. Pranams at the holy feet of both uh, Swamiji's dignitaries and the dais of the dais, and we have friends, Professor Badri Narayan, Professor Narayan, Nagendra Babu, and then uh, dear delegates, faculty and staff members, and, and my dear students. Very good morning to all of you. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to participate in the inaugural function of this International Conference on Sustainable Materials Manufacturing and Industrial Engineering and also image 2022 organized by the Department of Industrial Engineering and Management of our institute. It's after two years that we are organizing this image program because of this pandemic and our students are very happy and all enthusiastic about this. Uh, of course, image program, there are many activities as part of this image 2022. I request all the students to participate in all the events and make it a practice to win medals there. Winning is very, very important for you because it gives a lot of other skills, uh, particularly for the students there. Uh, of course, your participation and winning, uh, the performance in those events is no less than your uh, performance in academics. Also, I request you to participate in events outside the institute, particularly uh, in uh, well-known colleges and also outside state, but it, that is one of the requirements for the NBA program also. The department can set some targets for participation in outside the college in various events there. Coming back to this uh, international conference, I, th I think uh, we had a, an excellent lecture by Professor M. E. Reddy from Quebec. Uh, because only because of the time constraint that uh, you could not have it in detail. So, we would like to have some time again a detailed interaction with Professor M. V. Reddy and I request Professor Kardevarmat to take initiative in this regard. Uh, friends, of course, uh, research is about creation of new knowledge or use of existing knowledge uh, in a new and creative way to generate new concepts, methodologies and understandings there. Of course, people have defined in various ways. Uh, research in cutting edge areas and important areas is very, very important. It attracts the attention of the global community and in turn leads to institutional branding. So that's the important. And our visibility and reputation will improve. Institutes need to encourage the research as part of their mission statements there. And this in turn contributes directly and indirectly uh, to their primary mission of teaching also. In this connection, in our institute also, uh, we are changing our uh, mission statements to bring research as part of this mission statement. The question is how to do this research? One has to undertake this research work in a systematic way, in a very creative way to increase the knowledge in a particular domain. Knowledge becomes valuable when it is disseminated and used for the benefit of mankind. Of course, national development is dependent on the generation of new knowledge. We all know that the developed countries are looking at knowledge economy and things like that. So knowledge is going to play an important role in future. Uh, any country not investing in research will pay a heavy price in the long term development and most of the countries have stepped up their efforts in academic research. In developing, uh, developed countries, universities and higher educational institutes are research driven and they have become knowledge creating centers where industry works in close relationship with these universities there. Research universities through their expertise, reputation and facilities can attract new businesses. That is the model now. 
they can launch and incubate startup companies license and sell their technologies to other companies this is how the economy uh, gets generated so in india higher education institutes uh, are not able to attract industry for solving their problems this is a serious aspect that we all need to introspect then uh, the how research helps teaching so we often hear from our faculty i can only teach research is not my job that's not true research helps to develop the ability to question search for answers helps in understanding the theories in a better way faculty member who is involved in active research and also in wide reading i recollect our director was always telling us in the past so many years that please spend two hours of reading every day he was insisting so we need to take that message if you do this wide reading can bring new ideas methods and advanced theories into the classroom and students would be greatly benefited by this research allows thinking to remain fresh uh, it uh, makes thinking to intense and creative it makes teaching to remain current and updated then uh, how do you make out uh, a research environment in higher education institutions what are the attributes there if students in an institution are working for late hours in the library and labs that's uh, an indication of research in that institute secondly faculty members working over weekends which we normally don't see if that is there so research is there in that institute when campuses are bustling with talks and research conversations and research seminars is also an indication faculty members becoming editorial boards in uh, journals of uh, global standards and membership in research committees quality publications rather than quantity and amount of research funding an institution has a number of patents number of doctoral enrollments in an institutions and number of uh, foreign researchers and sabbatical in the campus are all indicators of the quality of research in an institution has i think uh, this is for food for thought and uh, i leave it to the faculty members to think on these lines then uh, how do we enable research so this also for at the institute and institution level the answer is collaboration so we saw this uh, presentation by professor reddy collaboration is very key for enabling research when i mean collaboration means uh, it enhances the growth of research particularly sharing of equipment sharing of laboratories and expertise institutions can also look at creating networks of uh, individuals networks of departments and you can also have a network of domains of knowledge for addressing challenging problems it is only through this uh, collaboration and networking uh, challenging problems can be addressed and organizing and uh, attending conferences will also promote research culture the one that we have in this uh, by this department of em is in that direction support by in the form of grants from public and private sector also enables research but the unfortunate thing is the public sector granting is in total disarray as far as india is concerned and the private sector funding is almost non existent so at the policy level government of india has to do something on this creating research infrastructure at the institute level high quality equipment and high quality manpower will all enable the research culture there and we also see institutes uh, in abroad they will move towards uh, super critical research and teaching innovation as time passes but in india so that is not happening so uh, but in india we see a decline i would say by design so that's very pathetic about the state of affairs as far as the country is concerned uh coming back to what is sid is doing in the enabling research so i would like to share uh, we have a scheme for uh, awarding research internship for 3 years so it is given there uh, 24 uh, research assistantships are given every year there 
and we are very flexible on, the, on that also. The second thing is we provide financial support for purchase of high-end equipment in case of shortfall in funded projects, uh, we are doing it. And we have this budgetary support for R&D grants uh, to the extent of nearly a crore plus to various departments. So that is also available in our institute. And we are providing mentor support for research work from outside experts. This is happening in the Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering. Uh, that will also will replicate that in other departments also. And I am also happy to mention that we have created an excellent infrastructure in our nano center. When IIT professors visited here, they said this is one of the excellent center even IITs don't have. But unfortunately, we have not been able to use it and uh, they are suggesting us, they would, uh, they say that we would help you, please put it back. This is an excellent facility. So, so that's uh, SIT has developed that research infrastructure in the nano area. And we have also deputed faculty with, uh, for full time with substantial financial assistance is also there with us. And then uh, uh, this year we have kept some targets for publications and funding to various departments. And I am also happy to inform you SIT tops in citations among autonomous engineering institutions in Karnataka as per VSTU. This is in one of the meeting that Vice Chancellor uh, shared among, shared in the meeting of autonomous college principals there. Coming back to this uh, conference on sustainable materials, manufacturing and industrial engineering, I think we had an excellent lecture by M. V. Reddy. I will not get into those details there. Uh, we fully agree with whatever all he has said. We endorse it research but energy uh, is also an area in, in, in case of sustainable materials. The science of nanotechnology is widely used there and we see the research, what level it is there, storage devices out of paper and cloth, that is what is being attempted now. Silicon nanowires to replace carbon nanotubes in lithium ion batteries, uh, this is where the research is there. People are trying for hydrogen storage. Uh, we had this knowledge economy, people say hydrogen based economy is being looked into and then metal hydrides and carbon nanotube based materials are the focus of research as far as hydrogen storage is concerned. And people are also focusing on anti adhering materials, materials to absorb moisture from atmosphere for getting water there in remote places in desert areas to solve the water problems there. They are looking at advanced materials for electric vehicles, then uh, for aircraft, high temperature, medium temperature applications and things like that. Manufacturing, additive manufacturing for low cost tooling, machine tools controls, material farming, joining, etc. I think uh, Professor Reddy has had a detailed list uh, in that area. And also in industrial engineering also we had a detailed uh, areas were presented by Reddy, I, I think they are the future areas there. I believe that this conference would be the right place for deliberations on these aspects through series of keynote lectures, presentations and technical sessions there. I take this opportunity to thank the keynote speakers, authors, advisory committee members, reviewers, chairs and co-chairs of various sessions in advance for their efforts and contributions. I also thank all the organizing committee members, faculty and staff members and students for their concerted efforts in organizing this international conference. My best wishes for this conference and also MH2022. Thank you one and all. Thank you, sir. Now I request our beloved director, Dr. M. N. Chanbasapa, sir, to deliver the presidential address. I submit my reverential pronouns at the lotus feet of His Holiness, Dr. Sri Sri Shivakumar Swami Guru, and also Sri Sri Siddhalinga Swami Guru. A very good morning to all of you gathered in this hall. Respected Chief Guest of this morning, Dr. N. H. Siddhalinga Swami, he had to go to Bangalore, so he went earlier. 
He was the development officer, office of the commissioner, Department of Technical Higher Education, Bengaluru, keynote speaker, Dr. Anandesh Pandey, Registrar Academic, Vishweshwaraya Technological University, Belagavi. Nowadays, it is highly challenging for engineers and faculty to adopt the innovative practices and advances in research and technology in industries and as well in academia and curriculum. Department of Industrial Engineering and Management is organizing an international conference on sustainable materials, manufacturing and industrial engineering, and state level students technical symposium. This international conference is a platform where scientists and research scholars from renowned institutes of various states of India and abroad are presenting their research findings on recent recent trends in the areas of sustainable materials, manufacturing, industrial engineering and management. The state level students technical symposium is aimed at showcase student talents in various technical events. I wish the international conference all the success. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for delivering the presidential address. Now I request Dr. K. V. Manjunath, Assistant Professor, Department of IM, to propose vote of thanks. Good morning to one and all. Showing the gratitude by saying thank you is more than the manners, it is a good spirituality. Bowing to the lotus feet of Paramapuja, Sri Sri Shivatumara Mahaswami Dalu and Siddhalinda Swami Dalu, I deem it is a great honor and privilege to propose vote of thanks on his memorable occasion. I, on behalf of IEM family, entire fraternity of SIT, and on my own behalf of extended to Siddhalinda Swami sir, Development Officer DTE Bangalore and Alumni of SIT, a hearty vote of thanks for accepting our invitation and inaugurate the event in spite of the busy schedule. Thank you, sir. I would like to take an opportunity to express our heartfelt thanks to Dr. Anand Deshpande, sir, Registrar VTU Belagavi, and Professor M. V. Reddy, Senior Researcher, NM Dra Graphite, Canada, for delivering the T-note address. So, for both of them, I could like to say thank you, sir. We are extremely thankful to Dr. S. V. Dinesh, sir, Principal, SIT, for unstinted support and guidance he has extended to all of us. Thank you, sir. I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Shutumaraya, sir, CEO, SIT for his gracious presence in the function. Thank you, sir. I would like to express our sincere gratitude to Dr. Raman Chanbasapa, sir, Director, SIT, to give blessings to the function by presiding the attention. Thank you, sir. Also, I take this opportunity to extend our most 
sincere thanks to all the guest invitees and participant from the different destination and for their cooperation i must mention our deep sense of appreciation for office bearers dr jp danjireti sir <laughs> dr bl lata shankar ma'am and and the student vice president manjunath and a special thanks to our guiding force dr rs kardevarmat hod of the iim department and one of the reason to carry out the entire image in a successful manner is our co uh, convener dr b advis sir i could like to thanks for him and i extended our gratitude to chief warden for providing food and accommodation the end of every event is a start of a new chapter i wish all the participant students best of luck for forthcoming events thank you one and all request all the research scholars who are presenting the paper to uh, move towards department of iem so the venue of presentation of papers is at department of iem so we will all move towards department